Good morning. It's Scott Cullen, editor in chief of the Canada Report. It's Friday, and it's Fridays with Frank time. And here he is, Frank Canada. How's it going, Frank? Hey, Scott. How are you? I am doing great. Nice to see you in your library again. You recently wrote a column for Frankly Speaking that was on mm -hmm. our website, and it was related to some of the things you're hearing from dealers about servicing clients and also about internal issues that dealers are having and it's surrounding this whole thing with vaccinations. And I was wondering if you would be willing to share some of what you wrote in that column with our viewers today. Oh, absolutely, Scott, because I, I think it's relevant. I, I think it's, uh, I broached it at the, uh, SDG panel, and I said, I'm broaching it simply as this is a challenge that I think you're going to be facing. So what allowed me to share with, with our readers who may not have uh, read that, frankly speaking. Uh, I was on the phone one day with uh, one of the major dealers in the country, and how we got into it, I can't even tell you. He started talking about this problem he was facing with this vaccination. So I said, well, are you having a tough time getting people vaccinated? He said, no. He said, I basically issued a company-wide mandate and said it's in all our best interest uh, that we do this. And I, I asked each of you to do it. And he said he got an 83% compliance, which I thought was fantastic. And so did he. But he said what he didn't envision was the 83% that got vaccinated don't want to sit anywhere near the 17% that did you think about that. Now, there's a lot of issues here at stake. And what we have to look at is the people themselves and who they are. Now, I always, I always start with women because I think they're the ones who carry the greatest burden because many of them have children. And boy, let me tell you, uh, when it comes to a mother and her child, that's it. Uh, and she has got to be, uh, in fact, we had a discussion with one of our, our dear friends uh, who wanted to come to the dinner. She's been vaccinated and is not coming to the gala simply because she's concerned to be in a crowd. And I said, good for you. You know, next year you'll be joining us. And so I can understand that. So here you have an, uh, an office with a mixed environment. We have men and women. Uh, and they're saying, I don't want to, I don't want to be in an environment where, where there are people who are not vaccinated. I don't want to bring this disease home. That's why I got vaccinated. So this is becoming a problem. Conversely, I, uh, very shortly thereafter, I had this other deal and I was having a conversation about something totally different. And we got to talking as typically we, we do. Uh, and what's going on. And he said, I, I have a real concern here. I said, what's going on? He said, I'm hearing from more and more of our clients that are telling us, do not send anybody to our offices that has not been vaccinated. He said, what am I, what am I supposed to do? I said, I've got, I've got top techs and top salespeople who have not been vaccinated. We have, a, uh, we have more than a majority vaccinated in the company, right? But there's still a lot that haven't had it. I keep telling them to do it, but I can't force them to do it. And I certainly don't want to terminate them. So now my thinking is, and which led me to write the frankly speaking piece is, this is not going to be an isolated circumstance. As the degree of people being vaccinated uh, increases, and it is uh, simply because of all these mandates uh, uh, that have been put out by the federal government. Uh, GSA is affected a lot in terms of uh, uh, getting people vaccinated in our industry. You want to do business with GSA, you better be vaccinated. Uh, so at any rate, uh, I thought it was worthy of a discussion and I would say for dealers to evaluate their situation. In plain English, screw the politics, look at this objectively and say, 
what is best for my business? If you could just look at that objectively, what is best for me to do with my business? Then seek out medical professionals who you respect. And I'm not talking about these crackpots that get on, uh, on television. I'm talking about doctors you know and you go to when you have a problem and you trust. That's what I do. I have a doctor, be, I told him whatever he tells me, I'm going to do simply because he saved my life. Uh, and I'm not talking about that if the doctor had to save your life to trust him. But if he's taking care of you and your family, then it makes sense that you listen to him in terms of what, of what you're doing. And then make your decisions accordingly. Uh, I, you know, it's this, our industry is not going to be able to recapture everything it had before the pandemic until our vaccination rates get much higher. Uh, that's just my opinion. I mean, some people could dispute that. And you know, we hear all, 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 other, all other things said. As always, I give you my opinion. I would encourage you to seek medical advice. And again, with somebody you trust. And then talk to your customers. When somebody tells you as a customer that I don't want anybody calling upon me that is not vaccinated, have a discussion with them and understand what motivated him to do that. If you're of a mind that says, no, I, these people have a right to say no, and I'm not gonna tell them that they should say yes. That's fine, that's your opinion, but you're in business and you gotta serve the public and you gotta serve the public interest. And really this is not about freedom. This is about, this is a health issue.